Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode in our How to Make 2D Minecrafts on Scratch, episode 10. In this episode together we will change the generation of our Minecraft worlds, and a few small tweaks here and there to make the game feel more like Minecraft, just 2D. Anyways, I can't wait to get started, so actually don't open up your projects just yet. We have one new asset to bring in from my asset project. You can find it on my profile or in the description. Click there now. Alright, it's all loaded up. Let's click the see inside button. Once you're in, click into the player sprite and in the costume tabs. Look at the new hitbox costume. This will prevent getting caught in the edges. Anyways, drag the whole player sprite into your backpack. You must drag the sprite and not the costume because Scratch has a bad habit of changing the center of the costumes individually. Now you can open up your project from episode 9. Save the file as a copy and let's get coding. The first thing you want to do is change the name from episode 9 to 10 because that's this episode. Now open up your backpack and drag the player sprite from your backpack onto the sprite panel. Now make sure you're in the player 2 sprite and click into the costume tab. Now drag the new hitbox costume into the player sprite. Now click there to see if your hitbox made it. Mine did. Now click and delete the player 2 sprite, not the original player. Now let's test our project to see if nothing broke. And everything seems to be fine. But look, these two block pillars are not fine. They don't look natural. Let me break these two blocks. Alright, this is what we want. Why is this happening? Well, after we disable the title screen temporarily. This is to help with testing. To do this, click into the backdrop and find the green flag receiver. You see this broadcast title screen? That'll make the title screen show. We have to change that. So click and change the broadcast title screen to a broadcast create new world. All right, let's test again. Okay, now the title screen is gone, but the two block pillars aren't. Let's fix that. Let's click into the block sprite and find the define generate world. Here you can see that we are generating either one, two, or three stone blocks in each column of our 2D world but this can go straight from one to three and vice versa. This is what creates a two block gap in our world. So we need to remember our last stone height in new variable. Name it stone height for the sprite only. Okay, at the top of our custom block before the main repeat loop, add a set stone height. And drag that prick random into the set variable. and replace it with the new stone height variable. Now we have to change the value. So let's do that in a new custom block named randomized stone generation. Then add a bar character, looks like this, and add the word min, M-I-N, short for minimum. And add a semicolon right after, then add an input matching as min before. Then a label of max, semicolon, with an input of max. Run without screen refresh. Click OK. Now drag the block into some free space. So instead of overwriting our last value, we need to change it from our last value. So change stone height by. And we need to pick random from minus 1 to 1. Is that all? No. We need to use the min and max inputs. So I will add a special feature for this custom block where you can leave the input blank for no limit. This part is optional. So add an if, then a greater than. If max is greater than the empty value, then add the not optional part. Another if. Then add if stone height is greater than max. Then set the stone height back to max. Duplicate the whole thing under the change block. Now replace all the maxes with mins. But we have an exception. For the stone height is greater than block, we need to replace it with a less than block. If the stone height is less than min, then set stone height to min. Now we are done coding this custom block. Scroll back to the define generate world. Now add the new custom block between the set y2 and the repeat stone height. These empty inputs should be the same as a set stone height as above. For me, it's two. And six. Shall we test? 
slap that green flag and give it a go. Wow, our world is a lot bigger than before, but I'm not seeing any two block pillars. Click the green flag again. No, I'm not seeing any of them. Good job, us. See how the world is nice and smooth, just like Minecraft. Wait, hold on. I can jump as soon as the game starts. Let's fix that. In the player sprite, scroll to the define reset player. Under the set speed Y, add a set jump time to 99. This prevents instant jumps. Now let's add features that we can change to be more like Minecraft. First of all, let's click into the sun and moon sprite. In Minecraft, the sun goes down for 10 minutes, which is 600 seconds, but it comes up for 10 minutes again. Therefore, a full cycle is 20 minutes. Let's add that to our code. Before, we added a 5 because it was a good number at the time, but to be true to Minecraft, we should do some calculations. Bring in a divide operator and put it into where the 5 is. On the left side is 600, which is 10 minutes into seconds, and on the right side is 180, a half circle. You could do this the other way, for 20 minutes, or 1,200 seconds, divided by 360, a full circle. Either way is fine. Alright, next tweak. Click into the player sprite and find the When I Receive Player Movement script. Remember that hitbox costume that we brought in at the beginning of the episode? Well, we're going to use it now. So before we run any code, add a switch costume to hitbox. So any code will use the hitbox costume for collision detection. But the player is not allowed to see that hitbox costume at all. So after all the code, add a switch costume to. What are we supposed to switch to? Well, if you remember the last episode, we added a character switcher, and we stored the costume in the player variable, so use it here. As you can see, I can't get my head stuck on the ground like before. Whoa, I just teleported way at the top. Why is that? I'll answer that in the next episode. That's for when we fix it. Alright, anyways, let me clear out the land to show you what I was doing. So Steve walks by, and oops, he fell in a hole. He will have to mine out. Except... He can jump really high. In the original Minecraft, Steve can only jump one block. So let's fix that. In the define move vertical, here's where we jump. And we need to make it way smaller, so remove the not jump time is greater than three. Replace that with a jump time equals zero when we were flat on the ground. Then shorten the jump. Set speed Y to eight instead of 10. Now let's test. Try to jump. Wow, that's much shorter just enough for a single block jump. All right, now since we are basically done, we can't forget to re-enable the title screen. So click into the backdrop sprite. Now switch this broadcast from Create New World to title screen. That's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoy this episode of 2D Minecraft. I'm gonna make a parkour course now, and I'll see you next time.